let's talk love for what you do, right? Because I, I, I just don't believe that any of us can excel. Maybe it's possible to excel, but you'll hate your life. You'll hate your day. Uh, but you are, you, 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 you made a point to say the money was great. Absolutely was. In year 2000, having an internship that pays $15 an hour, in 2021, there are people who don't make $15 an hour. Just is what it is. So you were balling, and it ain't like living in Columbus, Ohio, is living in Manhattan, New York. Oh. So the cost You're of living <laughs> is way different yes. in Columbus. So you were doing well. But the love, was it immediate for you? Did you did you start to say to yourself, I know I'm getting paid well, so, so that's a motivator. But I'm learning this whole other industry that is new. It is something that I can see a huge future with. Yeah. Every industry, every corporation, every brand is gonna need to incorporate tech into their day-to-day -day practices. Did you immediately love it? I loved it once I realized how I could use it in my life. I loved it once I started my own thing with it. You know, like I loved it when I realized I can change my life and people live, lives around me. So for my internship, they, they gave me a full-time position there. So with stock options, nationwide insurance, a position in stock options. And so I was like officially working for the man, you know, insurance, benefits, stock option, retirement. My family's happy. I made it. I got a BMW. <laughs> I have a little mortgage. I made it. And I just realized I was very not, very, very unhappy. And I was doing very well at work. Again, you know, making 50,000 at this time, I was 21, excelling. But I realized there was no really upward mobility for me. So that's when I started to say, like, I didn't love going to work anymore. I didn't love it at all. It just was like, I'm going to work, doing my tasks. I was very bright. So I was like blasting through my work. I would sit at my desk for hours a day with no work to do because I was so productive. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is not what I want my life to be. If I'm 21 now, what's the end goal? I'm going to sit here for 40 years. Like, when do you retire normally? 65? I'm going to sit here for like 40 years for real. And this is my life. And this is what my family wanted me to do. They was like, you made it. Stay in this job. You got your college degree. Go ahead and retire. You're, you're straight. And I was like, this can't be it. So once I realized I could apply what I learned at my corporate job, and I was working for the president of this subsidiary. So I was like really in the executive meetings as a young person and seeing how real organizations are ran. And I'm like, I can do this. I can start my own business. And so while I was working there, I started my own business, Urban Star, and I quit within eight months. I didn't even make it a year at the job. And I've been an entrepreneur full time since then, since April 2001. OK, stop there for one second. This what you did is so commendable. But I find that so many people have such a hard time, number one, admitting I'm unhappy. It's safe, it's secure, I'm making money, I should be happy, should. but I'm unhappy. You said your family is looking at you. Great, you did it, you made it. Yes. You're the one. I'm the shining star. You're the shining star, we have all been there. But I love to hear stories like this where people, number one, this it's in tune with that inner voice. They're in yes, that's what it is, Sean. I love that you said that. It's that inner voice. It's your inner guidance system that tells you what to do. And we don't listen all the time. And that's when we suffer. That's when we suffer. It, it, because when that inner voice is speaking to you and it's pulling at you and it's pulling, it's, it's letting you, this can't be my life. Most people drown it out. Most people, they use every excuse in the book to justify saying, this is great. I, I shouldn't listen to that voice. But even in your case, listening, although you're going out into the unknown, I know to some people you look nuts going from this stable, yeah, going from a stable position, benefits, stock options, and you're going to start an online event promotion platform. Right. Huh? 
Huh? Exactly. Are you crazy? <laughs> Lost your mind. My mom used to say at this point she gave up and they were like, we don't even know what you do because I didn't understand this. This is the website. This is WWW World Wide Web. These are, they was not on that. And so people say, what does Dawn do? She said, Dawn got a Tommy job, like for Martin. Like Dawn got a Tommy <laughs> job. Nobody knows what Dawn does. She's like Tommy. Like that was the story for 10 years in my family. Nobody understood. Even though it's clearly out there, you can go to my website. They didn't take it serious at all. How long did you have that website? I ran the website with my partner for six years. And then I had a consulting company that I kind of spun at, spun out spun out from the website because it, it created a demand for my services mm -hmm. that I said I have a big opportunity promoting instead of promoting these events online to be a consultant and help build out bigger events and also help companies to create um, digital marketing strategy. Because I did something very disruptive and new. I built an email list of 12,000 plus people in 2003 and I was getting very high conversion rates and I was getting over 100,000 unique hits. Again, no algorithms. None of the things that exist today. This is pure organic guerrilla word of mouth marketing. And so I went on to teach many other businesses how to do this. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's segue. Yes. You're an entrepreneur now. Yes. You're out there for six years. You have figured out whether it is through your online business, um, offline being a consultant. I can feed myself. I can do this. Yes. One thing I know about entrepreneurs is in the beginning, it's scary as hell. It really is. Uh, but at some point, there's this arc, right? You're scared to start, especially in a case like yours and so many other people who come from uh, stable jobs in secure situations. It's scared because you don't know where your next check's coming from. But you, you go out there, you do this for six years. And again, like I said, it's this arc. It happens in entrepreneurship. You go from relying on a check to not being able to conceive working and getting a steady paycheck. I eat what I kill. I don't know any other way. Yep. I'm just wired differently now. The thought of going in, punching a clock, working for someone else, it just doesn't mesh with me. That's because you know you have potential to kill a lot. There you go. So the seal, there's no ceiling. There's a ceiling when you punch in a clock. It's what they give you. But when you rely on you, there's no limit. That's, that's what drives me. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.